You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or on our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for April 20th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where our lawyers never flip, it's The Professional Left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Drift Glass, I have exciting news. You do? Tell yes. me, tell me, tell me. We have, we have new fake sponsors, Drift Glass. Really? Really? Yeah. Wow. I'll tell you about, we have two actually. The first new sponsor we have, uh, fleeing Laura Ingram's show, is Berry O's Berry Oatmeal. It's berry oatmeal that when you're eating it makes you say, hey, you know, this oatmeal isn't so great. But then later when it's all gone forever... You say, oh, man, I wish I had some of that oatmeal. Berrios, berry oatmeal. It's so much better than you knew at the time. I love berry berry oatmeal. I really do. It just tickles me to death. Uh, But we have a second new sponsor, so step out of the way, people. Uh, Our second new sponsor this week is Stolen Property Brothers. It's uh, built on the Michael Cullen model, and the name says it all. Stolen Property Brothers for all your hooker payoff, Russian money, laundering, and real estate needs. And I understand they also dabble in vending machines and small personal loans. Yes, they dabble in vending machines <laughs> and small personal loans. So it's a full service operation up until they go to federal prison, in which case they will stop being any sort of service at all. We were sitting around here in the uh, cornfield resistance in our, in our hobbit hole in the middle of middle America, uh, stroking my collective beard, wondering what kind of law firm does uh, Russian money laundering and hooker payoffs and real estate? And I can't think of anyone that encompasses all of those specialities with only three clients, apparently. Right. So I uh, I assume there's a big market for it since uh, Michael Cohen is, is doing real well right up until the part where, again, he goes to prison. So uh, we sorted, we searched around and found the Stolen Property Brothers, who are now a sponsor of this podcast. Um, I have a prediction to make. I think uh, Hannity's money is going to come into this somehow, that Hannity really? – Helped Trump pay off Stormy Daniels, really, or uh, provided collateral in some way at some point as a favor to Donald, mm-hmm. and that that's what's going to be the connection. That's purely off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Don't have any insider information, but Hannity, you know, makes somewhere between twenty four and thirty six million dollars a year. Yeah, well over two million dollars a month. Mm-hmm. And uh, that money's got to go somewhere. And why not use it to buy the friendship of Donald Trump and seal the deal? Yeah. Well, and, and that so, also guarantees him top dog, un, unchallenged top dog spot of Fox News. Right. Nobody t- can tell him what to do at all. Right. Now that um, his mentor is dead mm-hmm. and the owner of the company is 900 years old and terrified of pissing off Donald Trump, uh, Sean Hannity can do whatever the hell he wants. Sean right. Hannity could show up. Liter- soaked head to foot in blood, waving machete, screaming about cleansing. With cocaine the- over his nose, yeah. yeah. And it exactly. wouldn't matter. It, yeah. And yeah. and the next day he could say that never happened, and his readers and his listeners and his, his viewers would all agree that it never, ever happened. Never happened. Um, yeah. That's what we're up against. That is what, And that's, in one form or another, that's what we have been up against for a very, very long time. Mm-hmm. Been, mm-hmm. Um, extremely pronounced in the last two years. And that's sort of the subtext of a lot of the podcasts we do, including this one, because this one we're going to talk a little bit about um, James Comey and a little bit about uh, Ron Fournier and so forth. But first, perhaps let's do the news roundup. Sure. Uh, You want to do the odds and I'll do the evens again? Sure. I just want to mention uh, as an odd one, um, the former head of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, a guy named James Comey, who just released a book. I don't know if you know this. He's been doing some talk shows and talking to people. Apparently sucks at investigating. Yeah, I wonder. I think you said this last week. I'm I'm remembering some, but you know, maybe I'm remembering some conversation we had during the week. Yeah, he doesn't seem to be able to get away from being a centrist. No, he really, really, really wants to be uh, the, he really wants to be in the elite of the beltway, the beltway elect. So he reads all the right books specifically, uh, if he was asked to recommend a book that uh, he, w- he would want to, to have everyone on the FBI staff read, and he said David Brooks, The Road to Character. So check that box. Mm-hmm. Um, he knows how to clutch those pearls. Uh, yeah. He said that he was driven out of the Republican Party by Trumpian politics, which is very, very sad. He, he, the Republican Party left him, and 
I guarantee, I predict, Blue Gal, that within about 30 seconds of the end of this podcast, he'll be out there somewhere giving a speech to no labels, declaring mm-hmm. himself to be an independent. But right. third and most importantly, most important of all, is that the Beltway has an official designated, oh my fucking God, the Republican Party lost its mind, Event Horizon. Mm-hmm. And Event Horizon in, in, relatively, in relativity is the place where in space time, beyond which events cannot affect the outside observer. That's the point oh. of no return. So there's a point at which, and it keeps moving on the calendar, before which we won't hold anybody accountable for anything except, of course, liberals. It's the escalator ride. Yeah. Right? And the moment right. the Republican Party suddenly went from a responsible governing party full of wonderful people just like James Comey to a, a shit pile of bigots and imbeciles and seditious assholes was exactly 16 months ago. Mm-hmm. It was exactly the, the moment. The only people who will not, igno- will not lie like that are people who actually have to cover Republican base voters. Yes. Those people who actually have been to the Iowa caucuses more than once recognize that you don't understand. Yeah, sure. Donald Trump is an anomaly in some ways. He is right. outside the norm in some ways. But the voters who elected him are not. No. They are Republicans. Mm-hmm. Right not down to their Trumpists. Shoe not Trumpism. They are Republicans. They have been Republicans for many decades. And so and Donald Trump fed at the trow or nursed at the teat, however you want to put it, mm-hmm. of Fox News, just like they do. Yes. And so he comes out spouting about Mexicans are rapists and we need a wall and drain the swamp and all these tested things that come out of Rush Limbaugh mm-hmm. and Fox News. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden... A whole subsection of the American electorate that belongs to one political party Uh says, gosh, he's saying what I'm thinking. Oh, my God. It's like he's right in my head. He's the prince who was promised, Blue Gal. Yes, he is. And he finally showed, he came down that beautiful gold escalator right into my life. And and here's how I know that James Comey is now fully invested in being a beltway politician. Mm -hmm. Even if he never runs for anything, he is completely invested in helping them prop up the lie that the Republican Party, because he was asked in the Washington Post after he did his Hamlet routine and rent his garments and said, the Republican Party left me. I have nothing. I have no place to go. He was asked specifically, when did you see that change take place? Mind you, James Comey's not a plumber. He doesn't Mm -hmm. sell him citing. He was the former head of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. His whole job is investigating shit. And his lifetime career has been prosecutor, investigator, FBI chief. Right. I mean, following clues to reach a conclusion Mm -hmm. is his whole fucking job. So what did James Comey say? He said probably over the Trump presidency and probably began during the campaign of 2016. Nope. Yep. No, nope, nope. nope, that's a lie. That's a lie. And that's either he's too completely oblivious. He's He's been bred inside the Beltway bubble to the point where he literally cannot see what's going on two feet in front of him because he's been in Washington for years. Or, or he's, he's complicit. Or he's, or he's, he's complicit. Yes, he's complicit. And, <laughs> and what we know about that particular lie is that there's no penalty for telling it. There are in yep. tremendous rewards for telling it. And no exactly. penalty. Only you'll, you'll, be on, you'll be on TV panels as long as you want to be, yeah. if that's what you're going to spout. Right. The only people who are penalized are the people who say that that's a lie. Mm-hmm. Those people are never allowed within a thousand miles of James Comey's microphone. Uh, would you like to go to item number two? Which Sure. Is uh, Michael Cohen dropped a pair of libel suits against BuzzFeed and Fusion GPS over the LaDossier like yeah. a hot potato. Because he doesn't want any discovery about any of his business coming out before his criminal trial. (sighs) This week, uh, Donald Trump also decided that uh, he was going to throw his uh, U.N. ambassador under the bus and declare that we're going to put sanctions on Russia as soon as they very much deserve it, as soon as they deserve it, adding there's been nobody tougher in Russia than Donald Trump. No, but you, you can tell that he's gone from, you know, just plain ordinary bullshit Donald Trump lying to super lying mm-hmm. when he starts talking about himself in the third person, which is always. Yep. Um, everybody has been tougher on Russia than Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Certainly uh, Truman, by declaring a policy of containment, uh, I'd even give Ronald Reagan points for being tougher on Russia than Donald Trump. Donald Trump is is Vladimir Putin's puppet. Yep. He began his career that way. He depends on him for money, and he will end his career that way. And anyone who believes otherwise is a Republican. And that's Number, why we're in the trouble we're in. Yep. Number four, 
white evangelicals love Trump more than ever. Yes. 75% of them think he they approve of the job he's doing, mm-hmm. primarily because he's moving the Israeli uh, ambassadorship and, and so forth to Jerusalem, which is a sign of the second coming mm-hmm. uh, for them. And uh, I think it's also because he's a sexist pig who loves yeah. white people only. Yeah. Um, I wanted to go back while we're talking about sexism for just a moment and mention James Comey's approach to Hillary Clinton and the election and so yeah. forth, because there's lots of different kinds of misogyny out there, but there is a benevolent misogyny or a misogyny that the perpetrator tells themselves is benevolent of, uh, you know, honey, you need rescuing uh-huh. <laughs> or I'm going to make this right. I'm going to, I'm as the man am going to fix everything. Sure. And there are times when if it's in an equal relationship and a man says to a woman, whether it's a coworker or partner or whatever, let me fix that for you. And the woman says, okay, that that is a benevolent form of I can fix it and I'll go fix it. Right. Mm -hmm. When it is totally not your job to fix something, you haven't been asked to fix anything and you're breaking all of the rules to to quote unquote fix something and you wind up breaking it uh that is not <laughs> benevolent that is misogyny of the worst form because James Comey still walked away from that thinking he was the hero yes. and portraying himself as the hero of the story mm-hmm. and nobody on any side of the political spectrum is buying that line uh but I think if we ignore the misogyny that's in that statement, we're missing a component of the story. Yes, indeed. Yes, uh, indeed. Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party, led by Hillary Clinton, couldn't stand up for themselves, weren't, a, weren't allowed to simply present their position and get elected. James mm-hmm. Comey had to come in and make statements and explain things and make it – and also – destroy things as well i mean everyone assumed hillary was going to win he said that everyone assumes that and you said something that i thought was really important about that too hillary clinton is jesus yes right can you explain yeah. what you mean by sure. that because that's he's, you don't mean that in a sacrilegious sort no, of way no i mean that um she will she will die for your sins mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. not voluntarily you know she's trying really hard not to or she tried really hard not to but everyone lined up to drive a nail into her palm Mm -hmm. knowing Mm -hmm. that she was going to come off the cross and redeem them all in the end there'd be no price to pay for it so they could go up there and unload all of their sins on her they could hit her as hard as they wanted they could lie about her as much as they wanted uh comey could just step right outside any bounds propriety and announce an investigation into something that he knew was bullshit Mm -hmm. he knew it was wrong and and that's that's a little bit of a subtext here in that interview with uh, Rachel Maddow last night, he said, yeah, I, I didn't think anything wrong was going on. Mm-hmm. I suspected that that uh, Loretta Lynch was fine. I didn't think anything untoward necessarily was going on. But so, A, that's a political decision right there. You right. decided to break longstanding FBI policy on purpose for politics. And, and I you, think it's because she's a woman. Yes. And then, Loretta then number, and but number two is he was afraid that after Hillary Clinton won the election, which was inevitable, that the wing nuts would come out of the woodwork and and wreck his FBI and demand that, oh, how come they didn't tell everybody that she was under investigation the whole right. time, which he knew was bullshit. So he knew the bullshit was coming. He knew it was coming from one side. Right. And he knew that, that the media would just open the sluice gates and let them shit all over them because so the media He meant is, Fox News, not the media. He meant Fox News, and, well, and I mean, everybody knows it. Yeah. But what I mean is, there's the, the the Chuck Todds of the world would never defend him, nope. defend anyone against right wing onslaughts. They would right. throw up their hands. Isn't it a shame how both sides are to blame? Yep. So it was of this whole turducken, this whole club sandwich of bullshit and misogyny and nonsense, all based on the predicate that, of course, Hillary Clinton's going to win. And we can take whatever shots we want at her and we can poke her in the side. We can stab her in the heart. We can put a thorn of crowns on her head. She, we can bleed her out and she will win anyway. Mm-hmm. And then we'll all go on record as edgy and tough and and interested in the truth and nonpartisan, and we'll we'll, we'll make our bones on her body, right? And right. then when she gets into the White House, we can continue the party by just taking whatever comes out of Sean Hannity's mouth and turning it into a congressional investigation. Right. And I was going to say years. exactly. We'll have, we'll have four, four years of crucifixions, right? 
Right. And that was the plan. That was the fucking plan. And everyone in the Beltway knew it. And, and James Comey knew it. Everyone who, uh, everyone who should be able to tell the public that this is what, this is how Washington thinks. This is how the DC Beltway media thinks refused to tell us that. Right. They played this little game for the rubes out here in the cornfield, that this was all legit and it was all above board and it was all completely normal. And none of it was, none of it was. And they all assumed they could get rich off of uh, picnicking on Hillary Clinton and then she lost. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. suddenly the cave is empty. <laughs> right. And there's right. no body. And where's the redemption? Oh, fuck. And you're what responsible. Happened? You are. This is the thing that they're trying to swim away from now is, well, this, this only happened 18 months ago. And right. where's Paul Ryan? You're on a show that had phone in interviews with Donald Trump every week. Mm hmm. And uh, they just don't want to see it because the lifeboat, their careers have to survive forever. Yeah. So can I, I want to, I want to veer into Chuck Todd and, and Ron Fournier now or later, whichever you like. Okay. Um, Cause there's this wonderful video that my beautiful wife provided to me mm -hmm. uh, uh, from yesterday. From, and I got, I even got a little email from someone in the media just hanging his head and weeping going, Oh shit, really? We're going <laughs> to, I do have friends who are not entirely disreputable and who have Day well, jobs and clearly, my colleague at Crooks and Liars said, just shoot me now. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, just so bad. And this is up at, at my blog. It'll be cross-posted probably at Crooks and Liars at some point. Over the weekend, um, yeah. But it's it's Chuck Todd interviewing America's sad clown of centrism, Ron Fournier. Ron Fournier, who now is in Detroit. He runs a PR firm. He's out of the business, man. He got out of it. But uh, it, it the, the high and holy church of both sides do it, have has taken such a beating from Donald Trump. The, the very idea that this is somehow a both sides problem is is so completely discredited at this point. They had to haul Ron Fournier out of semi-retirement and put him yep. back on the Chuck Todd show right. to say words that the Beltway wants to hear. And there were two parts of this interview. The first part was Ron Fournier doing what they gave him money to do, which was sitting in front of the camera and say the following things. You have two parties that wage asymmetrical warfare against institutions when it suits their needs. And that's going on in a big way. That's the bigger problem, Blue Gal. Both sides Not, are, are attacking the FBI equally. Right. Is that it? Institutions, yeah. Institutions, yes. And it's asymmetrical. And it's coming from political parties and other institutions. Not from the Republican Party. Not from anyone specifically. And finally, he said of, of, of James Comey, who, who he says is tied up in knots. Because the Democratic Party attacking Comey, and, and for several weeks, you had the Republican Party attacking Comey. You can't win for losing. They're equal, equally to blame. Both yes. of them are. Both of the attacks on Comey are absolutely the same. Is that what exactly. he's arguing? Absolutely the same. It's asymmetrical. It's both sides. It's no respect for institutions. And and Ron Fournier is so fucking rotted in, from the skull down, so brain dead, so so big a fucking liar that it never even occurs to him that one side might actually have a legitimate complaint that James Comey stepped way outside of his his remit, his bounds to do th something for purely political reasons. And Republicans are attacking James Comey because they are running a depraved and corrupt enterprise that they're terrified is going to see the light of day. And it's right. going to take them all down. Those are two radically different reasons to be mad at James Comey. But to Ron Fournier and to Chuck Todd, it's all just font size. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're saying blah, 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 real loud. You're saying blah, 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 real loud. Blah, blah, blah is the problem. Not the content, not the, not the, the, the premise that you're arguing, not the veracity of what you're arguing. And that's, that is the beltway. They won't. This is how desperate they are to keep the scam going. The other side of the interview that was so weird and creepy was watching Chuck Todd flail and stutter around looking for some explanation for why this was happening. It didn't involve I did it. Mm -hmm. So he and, and this is a direct quote from the, from the video. It is as all as I always tell people, I'm aware that it's a trap. It doesn't matter. The trap was built around me. I didn't walk into it. It just is. Wow. Now, what the hell that means, I don't know. I think he's just drinking heavily during the middle of the day. <laughs> what it sounds like is he he and his fellow Beltway hacks built this both sides do a trap to keep people like you and me the hell out of their sandbox. Mm -hmm. But now that they're stuck inside this box where one side is clearly out of its fucking mind, they can't get out of it. Right. Right. And they have to therefore say this trap is not something we built to keep out the vituperative liberals. It's some immutable, mysterious law of physics that no one can understand. Mm -hmm. And we're stuck with it. That's just the way it is. No, it's not. It's, it, is a, it is a lie you built, Chuck, 
to protect your career. And mm-hmm. to prop that lie up, you got your old pal Ron to come on TV and utter those words that make your toes curl, which is both sides, both sides, both sides. And hey, that's- class, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you and interrupt our list for a moment. Uh, do you yeah. have do you have the new candidate for Illinois governor on the list? I do not. Oh, Sam because that's McCann? in today's paper. It's his headline of today's paper. Yeah, Sam McCann. <laughs> you want to explain to me what's going on there? Because it's kind of funny. All right. So once upon a time, there was a guy named uh, uh, Bruce Rauner, uh, who you and I know as Governor Hedge Fund. Uh, governor Hedge Fund is the is the current one term governor of Illinois who is about to lose um, to J.B. Pritzker, who has a lot of money and, and, and a good organization. Um, uh, Bruce Rauner spent a ton of money. Like, I, I don't know what it was. It was a like four to one or 16 to one, some huge amount of money. He outspent Jeannie Ives, who was this far right wingnut candidate who came within a couple of points of beating him in the primary. Yeah, she did. So. He was primaried from his own party, this billionaire, and he came within this much of losing to her because he's a sellout. He's not a real liberal. He's a he's a liberal. He's a crazy liberal because he's not like Republican enough. Right. Right. Because he's never Republican enough. So he has this problem. Anyone who's left or center is going to vote for for J.B. Pritzker. Um, they're either going to vote for him on his merits or wants a budget to pass yes. in the state of Illinois, which Bruce Rauner has refused to do for two yeah. years running. Yeah. Or is just so sick of Republicans killing everything they lay their hands on that they're just going to vote D no matter what. I, I don't really care why they do it as long yeah. as they do it. Um, yeah. So he's stuck trying to straddle a fence that doesn't even exist. Right. He's trying to bring in P- every every time he tries to bring in a centrist that don't that doesn't exist. He drives out two wing nuts. Right. So right. Sam McCann has decided he's going to run for he's going to run for governor on the conservative party platform. He's so a third have- party candidate because a uh, Bruce Rauner isn't conservative enough. Mm-hmm. And B, J.B. Pritzker needs to win by double digits, not just, you know, 12 percent, but 22 percent. And uh, this makes me miss for just a brief shining moment. I do miss Mark Halperin because. <laughs> oh, God. I would like Mark Halperin to come and say, you know, this is great news for Republicans. It's diversity within the party. Mm-hmm. No, well, it's not. <laughs> and and this, this also brings up um, one little thing that you and I saw in the paper this week. Yes. In a local paper that I do want to mention, as long as we're on this topic, which is... A letter to the editor section. A letter to the editor. I I have another post up about independence. You know, I I write a lot about the the, the ludicrous category of independent, which means nothing at all. It's a grand falloon. It's a proud and meaningless association of people. It doesn't mean anything. You can be a whack job Nazi and call yourself an independent. You can be a Green Party. You can be a man from Mars. It doesn't matter. any anyone and everyone calls themselves independent, which means the category itself means nothing. Except so, that these days, most people who call themselves independents yeah. are escaping the Republican Party right. label, and they still vote Republican all the time. They're escaping the Republican Party for two reasons: one, because Donald Trump messed it all up. That's James Comey. Yeah, you know, uh, Donald Trump just killed the Republican Party. It was perfect two years ago. It was great. I loved it, and suddenly they, everyone lost their mind. So I'm not a Republican anymore. So the Republican Party has gone too far to the right. Right. And then there, there is Jim and Trudy Young uh, from from our local paper who wrote the, the letter to the editor that said um, the party has literally sold its soul to Bruce Rauner and his money. This is why I sent a letter to party leaders a few weeks ago telling him that my wife and I, after 35 years, are no longer Republicans. But wait for it. Wait for I'm it. an independent. Independence instead. See, everyone's an independent blue gal. You're an independent. <laughs> I'm an independent. Everyone's a fucking independent. Which and means no one's an independent. No one's an independent. Exactly. But that's what's and happening in local so You were proven right. I mean, you have been proven right many times yes. over the course of this year. But yes, you are proven right about that. And then I was listening to um, radio in the car. Like you do. Like I do. And... This uh, interview with Kenny Chesney, an ad for Kenny Chesney comes on. <laughs> yeah. And I have been predicting a resurgence in country music as Trump declines, country music will increase. This happened during Bush. Mm-hmm. It'll happen again as Trump fails and falls out of favor. People will cling to country music and it'll be the flag and country music and so forth. Mm-hmm. And also, We'll all be independents. Right. That's right. 
So Kenny Chesney it has a new song out that he's going to be singing on tour this summer. And it's called Get Along. Get Along. Why can't we all just get along? You know, oh be independent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and drink a beer, sing a song, get along. Mm-hmm. We don't need all this politics, do we? No, no. I let's forget- just forget about all that and get along. I forget- well, maybe if your party hadn't tried to take away my children's health insurance yeah. multiple times, mm-hmm. we could get along. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think it was Reba McIntyre who who had a special. She did. Uh, she where she a promised. Show. Yeah, where she <laughs> promised, you know, we're just going to have fun. Yeah. You know, there's no politics. Don't worry about it. Which means that, you know, all the shit we were talking two years ago. You yep. know all the all the all the crazy shit. You know, uh, putting um um what's his name in the White House? Cat scratch fever guy in the White House. Yep. Uh, you know all the Sarah Palin shit we were running. All that celebratory nonsense that we were telling liberals. Haha, we won. You lost. Fuck your feelings. Fuck your yeah, feelings we, and kick the. Remember we kicked the Dixie Chicks off our radio stations. Yeah. We don't want yeah. to talk about that no more because yeah. it looks like we're about to have to eat a shit sandwich about right. the size of Montana. And, and we don't want to do that. We don't yeah. want A, we don't want to do that. And B, we, we don't have to do that. We have right. a whole media infrastructure set up that lets us off the hook every time we fuck up, yeah. which is every, which is every day. And we're, we are invoking that now. We're going to say no more talking about politics. It's just very unpleasant. Mm-hmm. It makes everyone feel uncomfortable. So let's stop talking about Donald Trump. And that means we're going to have a big MAGA hat bonfire in our backyard. You're going to admit you're wrong. You're going to say, no, I no, think I, they're I going to shove up. them down the garbage disposal yeah. so no one can see them wash down the pipe. But if you, if you leave ashes behind, that's still evidence. So, uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. No. All right. So, uh, number five, Drift Class? Number five, uh, Donald Trump has tweeted that he won't pay for California's new deployment of National Guard troops because Jerry Brown, you know, who's not an independent, <laughs> said the troops will focus on count, combating transnational crime and drug smuggling and screw your innovation, your, your immigration nonsense. We're not putting our troops down there for that. And for that, even though those are valid reasons that he put them down there, crime and drug smuggling, uh, Donald Trump ain't going to pay for it because he wants that wall and he wants everyone to focus on what a good job he's doing on that wall, which doesn't exist and never will. And and apparently Trump supporters are not aware that Trump tweeting he won't pay doesn't mean that National Guard troops in California won't be funded. Right. It, it's they don't know anything. They're just <laughs> it, it, They're it just, makes no difference. I, no. Because if there's a fire that that somehow gets across the border in California into Arizona, yeah, or, just or, or any other border state with with, with California, National Guard troops are going to be there, and they're going to yeah. be whether it doesn't matter where they're from. Well, this so, is the thing. Yeah. Donald Trump, like most Republicans, doesn't understand how anything works. Exactly. Right, right. So, Okay, number six. Uh, Defense Secretary James Mattis wanted to get congressional approval before bombing Syria next week, but Trump overruled him because he wanted his tweets to be supported by action. Yes, action, baby. <sighs> um, but he, but this... he tweeted what he was going to do ahead of time and let the Russians know ahead of time. And uh, we all know what happened when Barack Obama went to Congress, went to the Republican Congress before he bombed Syria. Uh, yeah. Okay. And they said, no, 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 go away. Just yeah. do it so we can yell at you for doing it. Right. Shut up we and don't go want, away. We don't want to be involved with our res- constitutional responsibilities. Okay. Uh, Mike Pompeo apparently met with uh, Kim Jong-un uh, very secretly. And when asked about it, uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders said, and I quote, the administration does not comment on the CIA director's travel. Uh, Because I got to keep all this shit secret. Literally hours later, Donald Trump's on Twitter going, Pompeo met with Kim Jong-un in North Korea last week. Meeting went very smoothly. And a good relationship was formed. Because he, I don't think they even talk to each other anymore. No. I think there's a a couple of paper cups and string that go from (laughs) Trump's office to Stephen Miller. Because he doesn't want anything written down or or in, in, uh, in document form that can hang him. But I don't know that anyone talks to anyone. Because clearly... Nikki Haley ain't talking to uh, anybody in the White House. Right. Sarah Sanders is out there saying shit that she thinks is policy that he undercuts her like an hour later, Mm -hmm. um, which is now it's not normal, but it is expected. And what is also expected and is a tragedy is that it's clear to me and many other people, many people's, not many people's, just anyone with a brain knows that Donald Trump is going to completely ignore human rights abuses by North Korea in order to have a political win. If that, if at all, he's he's going to sell them, you know, two condos and promise yeah, granite countertops, but granite countertops. But you know, never mind the starving people 
down the street because I don't pay any attention to them in New York City. Why should I bother with yours? Well, if, if anything happens at all, it'll be carrier. It'll yeah. be, I'm going to save these jobs, these jobs, these poor jobs, these people. I'm going to save them. It'll happen. And then uh, his you know meatheads applaud. And then a couple of months later, uh, they start getting laid off. And nobody notices because making the promise and getting the morons to vote for him was the whole point. Mm -hmm. Not actually keeping my promise because Donald Trump has never kept a promise in his life. His, his whole business model is lie to you to the point where you give him your money, then fuck you over and throw a lawyer in your face if you try to get it back. That's it. Yep. And Drew, that's a uh, Fox News economics clown. <laughs> And Trump's National Economic Council chairman, by the way, Barry Kudlow, mm -hmm. uh, he he said that Nikki Haley got all confused. That she was just confused. Yeah. Uh, you know how ladies are. <laughs> <laughs> he, she, she was confused about the Russian sanctions, even though she yeah. was on the sun issue saying the sanctions are going into place and Steve Mnuchin is going to put them into place if he hasn't yeah. done it already. Mm -hmm. I know this is happening. Turns out she doesn't like it when when someone talks to her about being confused, she said, yeah. with all due respect, which is a Carl Rove line, by the way, yeah. with, it, it means fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> with yeah. all due respect, I don't get confused. And it's a good, I certainly hope that Larry Kudlow can translate with all due respect, because if he can't, she's going to come back with a bless your heart. <laughs> well, it just underscores the fact there's nobody in charge. There's nobody, nobody in charge. And uh, she's going to say "fuck you" in Southern or whatever, or Carl Rove or whatever language she has to use to get that across to Larry Kudlow. Uh, no. And no one's in charge, and there's no communication strategy at all. No. It's just whatever that? Trump tweets tomorrow is what we're going to have to do. Well, yeah, and, and you get to do that. <clears throat> Excuse me, you get away with that when you know when you know that your base are reprogrammable. Well, we'll follow Donald Trump to the ends of the earth, and well, and. And that happened. The the, the a very uh, a very good example, a classic textbook example of that happened this week, when Donald Trump denied he fired James Comey because of the Russian yeah. investigation. Even though he said is, so three times, I believe said, on camera. <laughs> he said so on camera. He reported it as such, and he, and it it is just I never said that. That never happened. And the video of him saying it and doing it, and and the story of him doing it, and the story of him telling the Russians I did it, are all public record. Yeah, and. It gets it, it works for that small minority of stupid Americans who were Republicans, right? Well, they're they not running. Get, they're not running the tape of him saying that on Fox. No, they're running sexy pandas, right? <laughs> and Benghazi and whatever the fuck else they pull out of their distra distraction file. But since those people have no memory anymore, there's no long term memory left on the right. None. He can say whatever he wants on a Monday and contradict it on a Tuesday, and nobody on the right will 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 attack him. Um, and we on the left will, but of course, between those two camps are Chuck Todd and Ron Fournier going, you know, it's the extremes on it's both sides. It's the extremes on both sides, Strip Glass. It is a shame how the extremes on both sides are so nasty and, and unpleasant. All right. Number nine. Oh, no, you just did number nine. I'm sorry. Uh, number 10, Trump is still freaked out about the FBI raids on Michael Cohen's hotel room, office, and home. And, uh, you know, Ron Klain was on the Lawrence O'Donnell show last night, uh -huh. and he made a very interesting statement uh, speaking as a lawyer that there is a specific legal term for someone that is freaked out by FBI raids on their attorneys. <laughs> and that term is criminal. Criminal, yeah. <laughs> I've heard that a few different places. Yeah. That this is the one that, oh, no, this is, this is going to sink him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, there's, you know, there, there might, there might or might not be something, anything coming out of Russia that will directly, that will, that will take down Donald Trump. It, it'll take down a whole bunch of people around him, but he can just, feign ignorance or be, be, be a moron or say it wasn't me. It was a bunch of people around me that I hired that have, that used my money and my name yeah. and my campaign. It was all everyone who was running anything that I had anything to do with, but it wasn't me personally. So I'm off the hook. Right. Right. It was just everyone I know, but a uh, Cohen's case, that's, that's the treasure trove. That's all the, all the bodies that are buried all over New York and all over the world. And that's the shit that's got him scared out of his mind. And you can really tell. Yeah. Um, and Drew Glass, I, 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 wanna, we, I brought up Carl Rove, and I want to say too that Carl Rove started a lot of this uh, in, in the uh, contempt of Congress part of it, and the oh, you're just making politics illegal, or you're politicizing crime, or you're doing what it, you're the the streams between politics and my criminal activity flow all the way toward what I want, which is politics. I'm just, I'm just doing a political thing, not a legal thing. 
Right. And he did that and he did it masterfully. And so I genuinely believe that Donald Trump believes in his head he did not collude because he doesn't right. know. First of all, he doesn't know really what collude means. Oh. And it's just deals and politics and getting stuff on your opponent, regardless of where you get it, is just politics. That's all it this is. is how, yeah. And there are a lot of people on the Republican side of things who genuinely feel like all things are fair, that yes. we can lie, we can steal, you know, we can steal Supreme Court seats. Whatever is done in the pursuit of power for our side is blessed. Sure. Because liberals are monsters. Because liberals are monsters. Yep. Mm-hmm. So uh, <laughs> we Speaking we have of, some poll numbers to share with you folks. Uh, this is a shout out to Tammy. Yes. Our uh, our our uh, nerd angel who built our website for us and to whom we have uh, an enormous amount of gratitude. Uh, the race between Ted Cruz and Beta O'Rourke is now officially too close to call. In Texas. In Texas. Believe in deep red Texas. And that's entirely her. Yeah. That's all her. It's all her. She it's all Tammy down. and her hard yeah. work. Yeah. Uh, Barbara Bush passed away at the age of 92 uh, in her home as she wished her choice to end treatment uh, was honored. Uh, and you wrote something that's not very nice. Go ahead. <laughs> it is very nice. Anybody Things are working as... out very well for her. That's not very nice. No, it's not. But... It's, very, it's very much not. <laughs> she said that about uh, the victims of Katrina. Yes. Who were refugees who moved to Houston. Because their home was destroyed. Yeah, because their homes because were her son destroyed. Is a, part, in, in large part because her son is a moron. And and failed at, in the recovery efforts. And, yes, uh, absolutely failed. For Barbara Bush, of all people, to say that. Uh, yeah. Well, and and, and, and that speaking, doesn't that doesn't excuse what George W. Bush failed to do. No. Yeah. Well, and, and speaking of uh, catastrophically bad wow. Republican responses to hurricanes yeah. Yeah. that are based in no small part on racism, right. uh, the entire power grid of Puerto Rico crashed yesterday. Yeah. The whole island went dark. I don't know if it still is. I, I not. I don't because have. They a, aren't a covering it. They aren't yeah. covering whether the power is back on or not. We've moved on. Yeah. We've moved on. This is. This is these are American citizens uh, in an American protectorate, an American territory, who have been completely left on their own by the United States federal government because they uh, they are not us, yep. they're them, yep. and those people just have to figure out figure it out on their own. You can't federal government can't be nursing those people, nurse those people along. Just figure it out on your own. You, fit, you make some electricity, mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. And it's because they're brown and they're in Puerto Rico and they have no political voice in this country. That's the only reason they're being left to, to rot like that. Only reason. And if that's okay with you, you must check your voter registration because you're probably a Republican. Yep. yep. All right. We are on number 14. Yes, we are. The Senate Judiciary Committee said it will take up legislation to protect Robert Mueller despite opposition from Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell told them to go fuck themselves because I'm the one that decides what goes on the floor of the Senate. Right. Good luck, Good with, luck that. with that. And it's okay. like, no, okay. no. And it really is. I mean, every day it really is. What the hell do they have on you? I mean, I know your wife is a cabinet right. member. That's really it. Yep. That's it. You know, your wife's – Donald Trump is his wife's boss, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he wants – uh, he just wants power and tax mm-hmm. cuts. And as long as the, whoever's in the White House, no matter how monstrous they are, will sign what he puts in front of them. Mitch McConnell thinks he's doing it. It's a good deal. He's doing great. Um, now, this is this one just delighted me. Uh, a broadband advisor that was chosen by FCC chairman Ajit Pai was arrested la- last week and charged with fraud for tricking investors into pouring a quarter of a billion dollars into some fiber optic company in Alaska. Uh, she used it was a woman named Elizabeth, P- Elizabeth Pierce who used forged contracts with other companies uh, to guarantee investors hundreds of millions of dollars in future revenue. And it, it literally any place you stick a fork in the Republican uh-huh. Party. I mean, remember last week it was all going to be Scott Pruitt all yep. the time, and now it's not. Not because Scott Pruitt doesn't deserve to be hauled off in 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 uh, chains and thrown in a hole for the rest of his life, but because everyone in the whole fucking White House, in the whole Republican Party, mm-hmm. is this way. Stick a fork in anywhere, and you're going to find this reeking corruption going on right below the surface. This is the swamp. Build the yep. swamp. Build the swamp. Well, he did. So way to go. That's that's just wonderful. Um, and the major uh, swamp overseer, the people who make sure the swamp stays intact, is yep. Fox News. Yep. Which pledged their full support of have- Sean Hannity. 
after uh, Monday <laughs> when he was found to be after... Michael Cohen's third client and kept it a secret mm-hmm. from Which... his bosses, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Why tell them? I mean, what, he doesn't work for anybody. He yeah. works for himself. Yeah. Which is referred to inside the Trump, uh, the, the Trump organization, which is Fox News, I believe, as the bad thing. Yeah. OK. We don't talk about the bad thing that daddy did. We just have pancakes and pretend it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. And that's now, you know, that's Fox News. That's the entire right wing media. That's the entire federal government. Welcome to it. Um, for some reason. And we don't know why, but it would be irresponsible not to speculate. <laughs> the Trump campaign decided to pay sixty-six thousand dollars to the lawyer of Donald Trump's former longtime bodyguard. Don't know why. Had no explanation for it. But I could sure use a check for sixty-six thousand dollars for doing nothing. Oh, so. uh, Lawrence O'Donnell also reported that two out of every ten dollars that you donate to Trump twenty twenty go to his lawyers or to somebody's lawyers. Yeah. So yeah, his, you know it's it's yeah. a stupid tax. Yeah. That's what it is. Uh, Scott Pruitt upgraded his official car to a customized SUV with Kevlar yeah. seat covers. Yeah. Uh, Ten thousand dollars a year right. lease mm-hmm. for right. that for one car. Yeah. Uh, and a group on, in a related story, a group of one hundred thirty-one representatives and thirty-nine senators, guess which party, introduced a resolution calling for Scott Pruitt to yeah. resign. Yeah. There's yeah. there's no shame left. And and that'll go nowhere. No. Well, yeah. And- yeah, because the well, and that's the thing. Him. All of his people, as I've said before, and I'm, I'm getting—I know I'm getting rid of it, but all of them are awful. All there, there's just—it's like looking for the good guy in The Sopranos. There are no good guys. <laughs> oh, well, that's right. Is the good the good guy in in the Corleone family? No, that there are no good guys. They're all bad. They're all horrible. And if if you're looking for the good one, the good one was Fredo. <laughs> The story yeah. who's too yeah. is too stupid to commit really kind of gigantic crimes, but they were all horrible. Everyone in the Republican Party leadership is horrible, and they are horrible, and they stay horrible because they know that the Republican voters are too complicit and too stupid and too terrified and too brainwashed to hold them accountable for anything. So they get away with murder, including Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke. Uh, who apparently uh, passes himself off as, a, off as a geologist. Apparently, he has that credential somewhere in his portfolio. He uses it to justify everything he's doing, from shrinking Bear Ear National Park to making decisions about coal to seismic activity to climate change to endangered species and fracking and drilling, except Ryan Zinke has never once in his life held a job as a geologist. <sighs> and in the meantime, Eric Schneiderman wants to exempt New York's Deborah Jeopardy law from cases involving presidential pardons in New York. And he can do that. That's a state law, not a federal law, jurisdiction thing. Uh, and it, so my we most will see favorite how that unfolds. federal government department, because um, I'm yep. a nerd, is NASA. The Trump administration has mm-hmm. put up a climate change denying clown with no background in science whatsoever to be the head of NASA. Um, it's and and it'll and he, he was uh, he was uh, passed on a forty a fifty to forty nine vote. Well, mm-hmm. and it was a tie, uh, and <laughs> the vice president was Mike Pence was supposed to break the tie, mm-hmm. but Mike Pence was out of town. Yeah. <laughs> so they leaned on Jeff Flake who was the Republican who had switched over to make it a tie and, and got him to vote in favor of the NASA of course he did. Uh, non-scientist. Yep. And here's the tragedy. You and I remember when we used to walk on the moon, Lou Gow. Yep. We used to dream of Mars, and they were not that far away. And now a climate change-denying moron with no background in science is now the head of NASA. That's, yep. that's the country we live in now. It's not the country we have to live in, but it's the country Republicans want us to live in. Mm-hmm. Uh, Donald Trump's trade representative, Robert Leitziger, Leitziger, uh, is spending a million dollars on new furniture, and he blames Obama, you know? I don't know how exactly, but I'm sure Obama's well, to blame. Obama did I know buy new furniture, true. apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Bastard. Um, and here's, the, here's, here's one that's going to go under the radar, but really shouldn't, uh, because Donald Trump's primary method of communication with the rest of the species is Twitter. Mm-hmm. He has tweeted that sanctuary cities are where undocumented immigrants to go, uh, go for breeding. Yeah, because he's a fucking I racist. Because he's an absolute out and proud racist. And, and I know that loves him for it. His voters love him for they, it. They fucking love him for it. Mm-hmm. Charlie Dent's going to resign and leave office in May. He's not waiting until January of next year. Because oh, there's money. Oh, will... Money, oh, please. We'll I want to be on TV. Money. So 
I do what he'll I'll, probably sign do what up with the MSNBC about. too. That's the thing that really pisses me off. Yes, of course he'll he will. be on of Morning Joe. He'll, he'll be a regular on Morning Joe. I, 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 I will, what I'll miss most about Charlie Dent, except he will go yeah, straight to Morning Joe anything, and be on the, on the panel. Right. I, I'll miss him standing actually in the halls of Congress, wringing his hands impotently and talking about how great the Republican Party used to be. <laughs> I'll, I'll just utterly miss that about that guy. That son of a gun. That Charlie Dent. He's such a guy. Going to miss you, guy. Uh, James Comey declared that um, Donald Trump is morally unfit to be president. Yep. And talked about loyalty oaths like a mob boss would is the dominant center of everything. And he's doing tremendous damage to the institutions of our government and cultural norms. And Trump just fucking melted down on Twitter. That's sort of the overarching story of this. Well, and I think the other overarching story is how this was a perfect kind of microcosm of how our media system works, which is Uh a thing happens or a thing is manipulated to happen. Like the release of these memos And Rosenstein caved to the Republican Congress on this, that Mm -hmm. make no mistake, uh, he caved to their ability to impeach him. They were talking about impeaching him. That's one way for them to do Trump's bidding and get rid of Rosenstein. And so they threatened to impeach him. He caved and he gave them these memos, which were leaked in, what, 34 minutes? Within 34 minutes, all the news outlet people had them. And the reason it was leaked was so that Fox News could say it totally vindicated the president. Uh-huh. And no one's going to check on that in right-wing media. No, no, they're just going to In the announce- meantime, in the reality-based world, everybody is saying, wow, it really proves James Comey is telling the truth in his book. I know, it's like amazing. It's like he's got a good memory. He wrote everything down at the moment it happened. And wow, it doesn't vindicate anybody nope. of anything. Except it makes James yeah. Comey look like a, a more truthful person. And I did appreciate... But- um, the lawyers on uh, Lawrence O'Donnell last night, because he had a whole bunch of them, saying you can separate James Comey's judgment and, I th- and to his credit, you know, um, your favorite Canadian. David Frum. David Frum said the same thing. You can separate James Comey's judgment, which you can totally disagree with, from his veracity. Yes. From you, his trustworthiness. Absolutely you can. Yep. And he comes across after the release of these memos, as somebody who told the truth. <laughs> yes. In this particular manner. And absolutely. that does not help you if your enemy is proven to be somebody you can trust because nobody trusts Donald Trump. Well, and the reason these memos landed in the Republicans' hands is because they were threatening to impeach right. and or try right. everyone involved uh, to get those memos. And, you, and, and everyone – this is the thing – Everyone knew the whole point of prying them out of the FBI hands was to hand them over to Fox News. Everyone knew that. Right. Well, and the the point, though, I thought was that Rosenstein would stand up to Congress right. and say, no, these are evidence in a criminal proceeding or these ev- this is evidence in a federal investigation. So, no, you can't have them. And to get it was an opportunity to get rid of Rosenstein for Trump. But he called their bluff. The idea that bluff is what he did. Yeah, he did. Well, and but the the predicate, the idea they put forward was to advance the the completely legitimate and unbiased House investigation, which has been called off. They've closed the investigation. These documents got to have these documents. You're not investigating anything. And it it literally took as much time as it would take to run them through a high speed copier to get them from. The delivery point yep. out the door. That's that's all, and that was the only reason they were handed over to specifically so that a congressional committee, which is absolutely not supposed to leak this shit, could leak it, and everyone knew. That's how absolutely corrupt the process. Yeah, is. well, that everyone and that's my point. It's a for. microcosm of how the media works. Because here's Newt Gingrich on Fox this morning. President's totally vindicated, and vindicated. no one's going to check Utterly. and see what. What Newt Gingrich Utterly is saying is true well, on Fox News. He's the uh, he's the founder of civilization. He's the prompter yes, of civilization, the teacher of all <laughs> civilized values. You know why would you go against Newt? Um, now, on the other end of that spectrum of documents that yeah. you really, really do want to pry loose from somebody. And you mean the ones that were seized out of Michael Cohen's offices yeah. and hotel rooms and yeah. safe deposit boxes and yeah, yeah. Uh, the <laughs> Trump wanted them back seized. Yeah. <laughs> Give them back to us and let us go through them first. Yeah. 
and yeah. we'll tell you which ones you can look at. Yeah. Nixon tried that. Nixon tried that with the tapes. Uh, no, here's what I'll do. Here's what I'm going to do because I like you. You're a special man. And I like you very much, Sarika. Here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to actually transcribe all this stuff. And, and give it to you. I'm going to even well, leave some of the in. Yeah. When I talk about the yeah. Jews and the Negroes, I'm going to even leave that stuff in because I'm warts and all. <laughs> you need to know about me, warts and all. And the Supreme Court said, oh, hell no. That's bullshit. No, just give us the tape, asshole. And the federal judge told um, Trump and Cohen exactly what the Supreme Court told Nixon, which was, no, no, you don't get documents back. There's no givesies backsies. Sorry. Right. Right. Um, class, we have to start winding things up. Yeah. I want to uh, mention two stories that I think actually are kind of connected. Okay. Um, one is uh, the... Uh, you know, there's some really great people working at Fox News. There really are. There this, really this, are, Blue Gal. This great. came out, uh, you know, after the Hannity thing, when Hannity basically told his bosses, fuck you, I'll do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. And they went, okay, Mr. Hannity, sure. 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 Katie Tour said, so, you know, there are some great, great reporters at Fox. Great. They're really great. great. They're so great. And uh, Gabriel... Uh, Sherman, I think. Yeah, Sherman, the author of The L Loudest Man in the Room, the book about Fox. He's the Fox expert. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, yeah, you know, there are some good people at Fox. And after all, you got to work. Gotta, and they you, work. Wrote, they you gotta, wrote they... a really good post. And I showed you the clip for, that you put in the post. Thank you very much. I did. Uh, from Hollywood Shuffle yeah. of there's work at the post office. You, it's always yeah. work at the post office. And I, I relate this story to Kevin Williamson. I don't know if you do. Yeah, but to me, it's part of the story. So... That's exactly where I was going. It's exactly where I was going. Because um, uh, the idea that, well, you know, yeah, you're working for fascists, but you're an architect. And really, the only people hiring architects these days are is Mussolini. So what are you going to do? Well, here's the thing. Do something other than that. Mm -hmm. um, don't unless you're doing unless you're emptying trash cans and, and janitorial work, which is honorable work and completely nonpartisan. If you work for Fox News, you are working for evil men and women, and you should quit right now, or you're part of it. That's there's really no two ways about it. You are lending your talents and your abilities and your and your credentials and whatever you know about presenting the news to evil people who are using it for terrible reasons. So if you're if you haven't quit already, look, you're never you work at Fox News, you're never gonna be Cronkite or Murrow or Royco, none of those people. You work for awful people. So quit. There are jobs elsewhere. Go live someplace else. Go be someplace else. Go take your family from someplace else. But you're working for fascists and, and shit, boy, that does not wash off. That stink follows you for the rest of your life. And Kevin Williamson is trending today uh, for, the, for the most hilarious of reasons. Because <laughs> Kevin Williamson, you might remember, Blue Gal. You want to talk about his little background, oh, what, no, what his he, he uh, just, positions he are? Just felt that uh, women who had abortions should be executed and not by lethal right. injection because that's too clean. That's too sanit sanitized. Uh, so they should be hung. And, uh, you know, the, he explored this a little bit on a podcast and uh, then he got mm -hmm. fired from the Atlantic. Well, he got, he got uh, scared. Right. He got fired, fired and fired. fired. Um, got hired. And then a bunch of people came out and said, this is what this guy actually says and believes. Are you cool with that? And the uh, editor of uh, The Atlantic spent about 48 hours hemming and hawing and talking about, we have to have controversial opinions. We have to have a, a big tent. And then he said, holy shit, what did I just do? Yeah. And they fired him. They yeah. parted company. Um, Kevin Williamson immediately got a job at Commentary mm -hmm. Magazine, you know, mm -hmm. because there's absolutely no downtime if you're, if you're uh, on the Wingnut Welfare Chow line. There'll always be a job for you someplace. There's always, the trough is always full. And there's always a place for you. So today, Kevin Williamson was in the Wall Street Journal taking a temporary break from his gig at Commentary he has, Magazine. He has a, he has a full column in the Wall Street Wall Journal Street. editorial what, page. Yeah. Which I will never have, and you will never have, writing about how oppressed mm -hmm. he is and how, how persecuted <laughs> he is and how robbed of a platform he has been by the Twitter mobs, by the liberal Twitter mobs. And no one will ever hear his golden voice or his opinions ever again, he said from the op-ed page of the Wall yeah. Street Journal. And didn't realize the, the hilarious irony and the absolute reeking conservative privilege inherent in, the, in this. And he joins a long, long list of people who have no business anywhere near the op-ed pages of any newspaper who get those jobs because yep. they're wingnuts. Yep. 
because they're conservatives. And the people who run those papers have this misbegotten belief that the Republican Party is still the party of Eisenhower. And we need to scrape up some conservatives somewhere and put them on the page so we can be fair and balanced, a la Chuck Todd. And that's the problem. The problem is it's a business. It's not a calling. It's not a, a vocation. It's not teaching. It's not the priesthood. It's just yeah. a fucking job. And so what does it matter what slop we, we put on our pages? What does it matter? We're here to sell ad space. We're here to sell dick pills. We're here to sell reverse mortgages. And, investment and we fill in the right, gaps. From so investment yeah. banks. Yeah. And we, yeah. And we, 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 we pack around those things op-ed columns that will attract people to our – or we put yeah. Hugh Hewitt yeah. on the air. And at the end of the day, um, it is the sense that, well, you got to work, right? I mean, sure, you're working for a shitty thing, doing a terrible thing. You're working for people who are awful, and you know they're awful, but you got a mortgage. Well, Drift Class, so you, you and I have a mortgage, and we have health care bills, yeah. and we have lots of things that we have to pay for, and we're dependent on our listeners and readers for payment for that. Well, and that was, that was the Yeah, and you my, had that, that in last... your post. You did have that in your post. I don't want to go too deep into that because I don't want to sound like I'm whining. I'm not, but I thought it was – I want people to read it because it was really the good. point being, you and I could make a, a – substantially better living by working for team evil oh yeah especially if we publicly broke with the democratic party and said right. oh we finally seen the light and we're conservatives now we'd be on yeah. hannity tomorrow we'd be set for life yeah and th- sure. but there's some things it doesn't matter how much money they offer you you can't take the money because it's evil and it's wrong and you damn well That's know right. it unless you just consider it a job yeah Unless it doesn't matter who you work for. It doesn't matter who's paying the bills. As, as long as the money keeps coming in, you don't give a shit what the organization is doing. In which case, all you are is a guard at a concentration right. camp. Right. That's it. You don't give a shit. That's it. And Drift Class, <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed this, but have you noticed how many HelloFresh coupons we've gotten in the mail like in the many. past two months? There's many. just many, 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 many. many. Mm-hmm. And I just want to say to our listeners, I, we've always, we've always said if you can afford a right. espresso based beverage, you know, buy one for us. Uh, if you can afford a fifty dollar box of food to be mailed to your house, <laughs> send us five bucks. Yeah, because <laughs> you're listening. We are giving you uh, five hours of my week mm-hmm. every week. Yeah, and we love doing it. We do. We love Absolutely doing it. Love doing it. Yep. And we love you. So this isn't whining. This is our job. Five bucks a month. Uh, subscribe to the show. We appreciate you so much. And we appreciate all those people who've done that. And each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Ziva. Ooh. Ziva uh, lives with a longtime friend of the podcast, Lee in Mexico. Uh, Lee's partner said that Ziva and her sister, Abby, were just foster cats but they decided differently. <laughs> <laughs> they will do they that. They said, no, hey, this house is a pretty sweet deal. We're going to stay forever. So Ziva and Abby are uh, this week's Internet Kitties. The the picture is of Ziva. And Ziva is this week's Internet Kitty. Go visit Ziva at our Facebook page and website. You can send our your Internet Kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. We do not accept advertising from HelloFresh. No, we don't. Or anybody. (laughs) Or anybody. And this is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We have a PayPal, postal address, GoFundMe, you, uh, Patreon. You pick, you give, we appreciate. And we know you're getting your tax refund, so come on, people. Well, and, and those people that are waiting for their tax refund to come to send us uh, a donation, we get it. We or, totally get that, yep. and we appreciate it. Yes, we so, do. We, we will wait with you. That is fine. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are outside right now in the beautiful weather we're enjoying, celebrating 420 and protesting guns. Blaze it. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, loving. 
Let's forget about the wine and the crime, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.